Welcome to Original Mind Zen Sangha. I don't want to talk about something that's very basic, but very important. Um, we all here know or should know the story of how Siddhartha Gautama sat under a Bodhi tree. And there he stayed until he woke up as a Buddha. Part of our process of understanding this story, we've learned about things like samsara, um, which is the world of the cycle of birth and death and rebirth. And we had to grow into an understanding of shunyata or emptiness of the zero-ness or potentiality of each present moment as it occurs. And so at some early point in our journeys and to awaken, we set our sight upon experiencing shunyata directly. We have meditation, kangens, study. We created our own practices and more or less stuck to that practice. We read books, we listened to Dharma talks, um, we perhaps received one or more Dharma riddles from our teachers that was intended to point our noses in that direction. We breathe in and out our Hua Du, our infinite question, who am I, or perhaps what is this? We investigated possibly Wu until everything in our world became Wu. We've pursued shunyata the way a hungry cat sits outside of a mouse hole, unblinking, unmoving, with all of our attention and hopefully with great patience. Shunyata early in our training becomes the journey. It becomes everything. Buddha also pursued Shunyata, although perhaps less sure of exactly what it was that lay at the end of his journey. One day, finally, there it was. There he was. We might think that's the end of the story. We might think that's the point where he got off of the ride and began teaching what he knew to others. But in thinking that, we'd be missing the really important part of the story. Much like the blind men only understood a tiny part of the elephant that they were touching. Shunyata is not where this journey ends. Shunyata as a destination is no more than a trap. When we identify Shunyata as a final end to our journey, we slip into dualistic thinking. It becomes a common pitfall to then bypass what's actually happening when a crisis or a tragedy arises in our lives. When we're disappointed, when we become angry, when we feel grief, it can be momentarily comforting to tell ourselves, or even worse, tell others that everything we're experiencing is empty. That our feelings are no more than vestiges of the samsaric world and that they're somehow then invalid, that we don't have to feel these things. But in this bypassing, we lose our chance to take in and cherish what's happening inside of ourselves or if we're counseling someone else to encourage them to take in and cherish what's happening in their realities right now in this moment. We lose the chance to examine these thoughts and these feelings and whether or not they are ours to carry or given to us by our forebears or something that we picked up that we never needed to. We carried forward so much unexamined trauma, so many unexamined expectations 
And so very much of our worldview and our behaviors from conditioning placed upon us when we were very small children. These are karmic seeds that we've subconsciously watered all of our lives. And because we're so accustomed to them being underfoot, we often fail to notice that they exist at all. And yet they shape those things that we think and feel every moment of every day. And so when we bypass these thoughts and feelings as empty, we walk right past doors that lead to freedoms that we don't even know yet exist. These, these are the doors to our full humanity. Pinata isn't a destination. It's a vehicle to waking up to our full potential as thinking, feeling, experiencing beings. Gautama Buddha didn't wake up to godhood. He woke up to being fully human. He woke up to the pain of the human body with its tendencies to grow sick, get old, and die. And he did. He woke up to the raw vulnerable pain, or correction, the raw pain of a vulnerable heart. And so even he cried at the death of a loved one. He woke up to the recognition that the suffering of another person was akin to his own suffering. And so he undertook to teach others that they too might become self-aware. Many times we as Zen student, we become fixated on the prize of awakening. We hear stories told by many teachers that suggest that the Buddha was somehow extra human, that he experienced no pain after awakening, that he was untouched by the miseries of the world. There are even stories that flowers filled the sky whenever he spoke. This, my friends, could not be more incorrect. It is the nature of a human being to feel pain. This is an inescapable truth. And perfection is no more than a conceptual projection. What we can do, though, is we can learn not to add unnecessary suffering to the pain that is part and parcel of carrying around a human body, a human heart and a human mind. We can learn how to let go gracefully while still cherishing deeply those that we love. We can learn how to experience having a body that gets sick and grows old and ultimately dies without also carrying the existential dread that accompanies facing our own mortality. We can learn to experience this world in its rich fullness without demanding that it deliver itself to us on our demand. This is the Buddha waking up to being human. We believe that waking up means we'll never feel fear or anger or jealousy. We're, we're really setting ourselves up for disappointment. Emotions, like thoughts, create themselves. Just as it's futile to believe that we can control our thinking and create a permanent inner blank slate of thoughtlessness, it's a bit naive to ever believe that when we experience full awakeness, we'll never again have to experience negative emotions. If we completely lost our ability to feel negative emotions, it follows that we would also lose the richness of positive emotions. A life like that is not a human life. As Zen practitioners, it's our, it's our task to find and walk 
to the middle way. This means finding a place to live that's somewhere between allowing our thoughts and emotions to drag us this way and that and becoming completely detached. Even grief can be cherished, brought, and released. Being a Buddha waking up to being a human means that we're given the unique opportunity to seek out and understand the burdens that we carry. Some of them our own, and some of them passed down by generations before us. It means that we can gather them in, learn to love them, and fully integrate our lessons. And it means that we can eventually set them down. So as we as individuals sit on our cushions and lower our gazes, as we step into our roles of the cat waiting outside the mouse's home, perhaps we could consider that it is not anything extra human that we're doing. If we could remember that Shunyata is not something outside of our own selves, if we can be creative be careful not to create a belief that we'll somehow rise above all of our past history, our feelings, even the thoughts that arise from our, our minds, our dark recesses. Um, rather that instead our job is to learn to gather these things in, to learn to love them, and to integrate them into our perceptions of our selves, we may begin to recognize the truth that our teachers have told us from the very beginning. We were born already Buddhas, and that our ultimate task is to learn to wake up to being human. 